Hello everyone! Today is the day to explore science. You can learn something new every day if you listen, think, and talk. For today's discussion, we will talk about ecological relationships. Our learning competency for this week is to describe the different ecological relationships found in an ecosystem. But before that, let us review. Last week, we talked about biotic and abiotic components of an ecosystem. We learned that biotic component involves living organisms primarily as producers, consumers, and decomposers, while abiotic components involves non-living matter like water, soil, sunlight, rocks, weather, air, and others. Now, let us talk about ecological relationships. But before that, let us define first ecosystem. Ecosystem is a community or a group of living organisms that live in and interact with each other in a specific environment. For instance, tropical forests are ecosystems made of living beings such as trees, plants, animals, insects, and microorganisms that are in constant interaction between themselves and that are affected by other physical or chemical components. Now, what is ecological relationships? When we say ecological relationships, this is the populations of all the different species that live together in an area make up an ecological community. Interactions between two or more species are called interspecific interactions. It includes competition and predation. Competition is an interaction between organisms or species in which both the organisms or species are harmed. Limited supply of at least one resource used by both can be a factor. There are two types of competition, the intraspecific competition and interspecific competition. First, intraspecific competition. It occurs between members of the same species. For example, two male birds of the same species might compete for mates in the same area. This type of competition is a basic factor in natural selection. It leads to the evolution of better adaptations within a species. Interspecific competition occurs between members of different species. For example, predators of living species might compete for the same prey. An example among animals could be the case of cheetah and lion. Since both species feed on similar prey, they are negatively impacted by the presence of the other because they will have less food. However, they persist together. Despite the prediction that under competition, one will displace the other. Next to competition is the predation. Predation is a form of symbiotic relationship between two organisms of unlike species in which one of them acts as predator that captures and feeds on the other organism that serves as the prey. The best known examples of predation involve carnivorous interactions in which one of animal consumes another. For example, snake eating a rat. Some predators are not true predators because they do not kill their prey. Instead, they graze on their prey 
in grazing a predator eats part of its prey but rarely kills it. Not all predators are animals. Carnivorous plants such as Venus flytrap and the pitcher plant consume insects. Venus flytrap captures an insect between the two lobes of a leaf and seals the insect inside the digestive enzymes. These plants absorb nutrients from the insects as they become available during digestion. Another ecological interaction is symbiotic relationships. Symbiosis is a general term for interspecific interactions in which two species live together in a long-term, intimate association. The first symbiotic relationship is mutualism. It is a biological interaction between two species wherein both the species benefit from each other. For example, the bee and the flower. Bees fly from flower to flower gathering nectar, which they make into food, benefiting the bees. When they land in the flower, the bees get some pollen on their hairy bodies, and when they land in the next flower, some of the pollen from the first one wraps off, pollinating the plant. This benefits the plant. In this mutualistic relationship, the bees get to eat and the flowering plants get to reproduce. In this example, a certain kind of bacteria lives in the intestines of humans and many other animals. The human cannot digest all the food that it eats. The bacteria eat the food that the human cannot digest and partially digest it, allowing the human to finish the job. The bacteria benefit by getting food and the human benefits by being able to digest the food it eats. Another example is an alga and a fungus. Thus, fungus protects the alga from harsh temperature change while the alga nurtures the fungus. Spider crabs live in shallow areas on the ocean floor. The greenish-brown algae lives on the crabs' banks, making the crabs blend in with their environment and unnoticeable to predators. The algae gets a good place to live and the crab gets camouflage. The next symbiotic relationship is the commensalism. Commensalism is a type of symbiotic relationship between two organisms in which one benefits without affecting the other one in any way. For example, a clownfish lives in the tentacles on the animals which protects them from the predators. Predators are poisoned by the nematocyst of the animals. The clownfish benefits but the animal is neither affected. Another example is a remora fish and a whale shark. By attaching itself to the shark, the remora is carried along by the shark, allowing the remora to travel to different areas without having to expend its own energy to swim. The shark is completely unaffected by the remora's presence. Another example is a bird nest in a tree. Birds nesting in trees provide an example of commensal relationship. The tree is not harmed by the presence of the nest among its branches. The nests are light and produce little strain on the structural integrity of the branch. The most of the leaves which the tree uses to get energy by photosynthesis are above the nest so they are unaffected. 
The bird, on the other hand, benefits greatly. If the bird had to nest in the open, its eggs and young would be vulnerable to predators. Next is the parasitism. Parasitism is a relationship between two species of plants or animals in which one benefits at the expense of the other, sometimes without killing the host organism. There are two types of parasites, the endoparasites and intracellular parasites. Endoparasites including ticks, fleas, leeches, and lice, which live on the body surface of the host and do not themselves commonly cause disease in the host. While intracellular parasites, such as bacteria or viruses, often rely on a third organism, known as the carrier or a vector, to transmit them to the host. For example, the tick lives in the body of the dog, making it its host. It gets all the food and nutrients by sucking the dog's blood. The dog gets no benefit from the tick, instead he is harmed. Next is a tapeworm inside the intestine. Tapeworms are segmented flat worms that attach themselves to the inside of the intestines of the animals such as cows, pigs, and humans. They get food by eating the host partly digested food, depriving the host of nutrients. To sum up with, Ecosystem is an interaction of living and non-living things and has ecological relationships, namely mutualism. Both species benefit from each other. Next is commensalism. It involves two organisms in which one benefits without affecting the other one in any way. Next is parasitism, which one benefits at the expense of the other, sometimes without killing the host organism. Next is predation, a relationship between two species of animal in an uncommunity, in which one, the predator, hunts, kills, and eats the other or the prey. And lastly, the competition, a relationship between organisms that strive for the same resources in the same place. To assess your learnings about ecological relationships, let us have a quiz. All you have to do is to identify the relationship. First, bird nest in a tree. That's right! The answer is commensalism. Next, Venus flytrap plants eating insects. Very good! The correct answer is predation. Next, an alga and a fungus. Good job! The relationship is mutualism. Next, the anemone and a clownfish. The correct answer is commensalism. Lion versus cheetah. Very good. The answer is competition. Before we end up our lesson, I want you to make a reflection. 
the question is, why are symbiotic relationships important in an ecosystem? You may type your reflection in a comment below. Thank you for listening and participating our lesson. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel for more video lessons on Science 7.